Hey everyone, Tony Winston here for Classical Piano Workshop and welcome back. Today I'm working out of one of the original Japanese Suzuki books, Suzuki Piano Book 3. One song that's been left out of the repertoire is the Sonatina, the very last song in the book, the Sonatina by Mozart. It's four pages and of course the uh, the sheet music is down in the description. You can download it or print it out. Before I get into a small tutorial about this piece, uh, I'd like my student Eric to play it for you. And he did this a couple of days ago. And we did the second two pages first. And then I kind of said, oh, he's playing it so well. Do the first two pages. And we set up the camera and got better sound on the, on the first two pages. So uh, anyway, here he is to play Sonatina by Mozart. Okay, thanks, Eric. So 
A lot of good things are taught in this song. For one thing, these little phrases. You know, it's just a great place to teach students to lift their hands at the end of a phrase. And notice that the phrase line connects all the notes, but the first note is staccato, so. Right? And lots of ties that are easy to miss in here as well, uh, like down here on the second line. Okay. All right, we have a typical kind of a left hand here where we hold the first note. And that one pattern there. Yeah, don't hold the F sharp too long on that one. It's a little bit shorter. Um, some other kind of difficult spots are some of these... Now, it's very typical in minuet and trio to go into kind of a middle section, which uh, is in a different key, and that's what happens here. Instead of being in the key of G, we're now in the key of C. And again, the left hand is holding these bottom notes like that. And we've got... And we've got some nice power chords down here on the next phrase. All right, this is what we call in the rock and roll business a power chord, you know, because it sounds powerful, but. viewers that usually watch my jazz videos, Mozart does a really incredible chord here. He does a, an altered dominant chord with a flat 9 and a flat 13, and uh, it's a really beautiful part of the song. Did you hear it? Right here. Right, we've got G7. We've left the five out, just like a good jazz player would normally do on a dominant seventh chord with lots of uh, extensions. It's got the flat nine, and it's got the flat 13, which is also, also sometimes called the sharp five. So, you know, some chord symbols that you might see would be like G plus seven, meaning an augmented chord with a seventh, and uh, then with a flat nine or just G altered, or, you know, a G7, and then in parentheses it might have a flat 9 and a flat 13. Okay, and, uh, you know, there's a nice little transition going back into the uh, A section. So a little chromatic scale down here. Two, three. Two, three. Five, six. <laughs> Five, six. You can count six, eight either as one, two, three, one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five, six, whichever is easier for you. Now with those slurs, you might think to maybe do it this way. And I think that sounds okay. Uh, but in this edition, and I'm not sure, that it, they did include this song in one later edition of the Suzuki books, but then they dropped it. So this one's marked staccato. You slow down just a little bit and then back to the original tempo. A very elegant and beautiful piece. I hope you'll enjoy learning it. And thanks for tuning in as always.